Pastor Bob shared with me, actually some weeks ago, in reference for sharing the word. But I shared with him that with the demand that was just going on at work and what have you. But nonetheless, on last Wednesday, he asked again, and thank God for the time off. So I said yes, I wanted to be obedient. Amen. So I am excited, and I thank God for that. At the same time, I just want to go ahead and just give a personal testimony, because I'm going to be honest with you. There has been some, this seems like this time of the year, okay, let's just be honest. It's uh, sometimes a little difficult for me, but I thank God for being able to just trusting in him. And to know that he is right by my side. And thank God for his peace. And with that, and you know, some of you know that this year, uh, my uncle and my aunt went to be with the Lord. And God was able to use me to be able to deliver those messages as well. And that peace, knowing that I'll see them again also. And then I said, the work demand, and that such. You know, you be careful what you ask God for. You ask God for increase, and yes, it's going to come one way or the other, okay? But nonetheless, to God be the glory. And then I was having some issues dealing with my blood pressure, and they had to change my medicine. And we went from 25 milligrams, now actually 5 milligrams, to... 25 and they said well now you're going to expect a little maybe a little dizziness and that such just until your body gets adjusted to it so i was saying okay uh she said it may take about a couple of weeks of that such so in the meanwhile she said i want you to make sure that you eat plenty of bananas because the side effect might be with your potassium and i'm saying oh my gosh with the work demand and just other little things that's going on. So now you're saying that the blood pressure medicine is going to cause like a little energy loss and that such. That's all I needed. But nonetheless, I went ahead and obeyed and at the bananas and I had to go back and have my blood work done. And well, when she was checking, we went over and everything was fine with the potassium. So thank God for that. Amen. So with that said, I was like, Lord, what do you want me to share? What, what's the word? Is the word for me? What do you want me to share? Because I thank God for my pastor Bob. I thank God for the shield. And I just want to not only be, a, I want to be a blessing. And then I know that I want that encouragement as well. So with that said, the word perseverance that came. And with, like I said, with for my personal struggle and things that were going on, I'm like, okay, yes. I'm just going to go ahead and begin to just study perseverance. So, as I said, on last Wednesday was here, and Missy asked me, she said, do you have your Sunday school book for, for the year? And I said, well, no, I don't. So I went back there, and I got the Sunday school book, and went ahead and went home and I put it on my, on my shelf. So for the past couple of days, I just that word, perseverance, perseverance. And I'm like, God, is, is that what, just personally for me, is that what you want me to share with the congregation? I, I want to know. So I went ahead and I was up for hours, just up for hours, and I was studying perseverance. So then... I guess just me, I would say, no, I think it's something else, Lord. I think it's something else. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to bed, and I'm just going to just relax in you. So about 5 this morning, I got up. And well, you know, I got up. But the word faith to persevere was in my mind. So I went to the bookshelf, and I picked up my Sunday school book. I felt led. And then I just opened it up. And this was for December the 17th, lesson three. And what did it say? Faith to pe persevere. So I was saying, okay, God. But I felt that peace. So with that said, the word persevere. Persevere. 
So I want to go ahead and start with prayer. Eternal God, I thank you for this opportunity. And Lord, we thank you for your presence. God, thank you for each and every one here. Oh God, that our spirits are open to you just to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And Lord God, we thank you for this word. And Lord, we just ask that your divine will be done. We give you honor, we give you glory, and we just thank you right now, God, for those that I know that this CD will go out to, to many others, that they will be encouraged by this word of perseverance. And for that, we give you honor and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Perseverance. The definition is said, steadfastness in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. Persevere, to persist in a state or undertaking in spite of counter influences, opposition, or discouragement. Persistence, tenacity, determination, a staying power, having that endurance, dedication, or commitment, and stamina. I want to go to Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Very familiar passage of scripture. It says, let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap if we do not give in. Having that fruit of perseverance, difficulty, sadness, opposition that you might be facing. But thank God, and I thank God, for that fruit of perseverance. As I said, it seemed for me that during this Christmas time, and a lot of you know that story, but thanking God for his perseverance, thanking God for the, the staying power, the greater one that lives in each and every one of us, that even during our time of difficulty, he is there with us. And he gives us a peace and he gives us that strength, that infusion that comes from the spiritual, comes from him. And we know in whom we believe and we know he, who we can look to. Galatians chapter 6, 9. And it says, and let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time and at the appointed season, we shall reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. Tenacity to hold on to that hope that we have in Christ and to know that he is there with us. Amen? Amen. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. And for the rest of you, Believers, do not grow tired or lose heart in doing good, but continue doing what is right without weakening. Find the faith to persevere. Persevering despite the opposition. Now the story, this is coming from Acts chapter 14 beginning at verse 8 through 11. Acts 14, 8 through 11. And it says, Now at Lostra, a man sat who was unable to use his feet, for he was crippled from birth and had never walked. This man was listening to Paul as he spoke, and Paul looked intently at him and saw 
that he had faith to be healed and said with a loud voice, stand up on your feet. And he jumped up and began to walk. And the crowds, when they saw what Paul had done, raised their voices, shouting in the Lagonian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. But I want to just take that word crippled. That word cripple, it means to deprive of the use of a limb, to deprive of a capability for service or of strength, efficiency, or wholeness. But that word that the Lord just kept in my spirit and just to encourage myself was perseverance. You have to continue to persevere because the enemy we know, he wants to kill, steal, and destroy. If he can take you out, he'll do that. But if he can't, he will use things just to try to cripple your faith or to try to weaken you. But perseverance, grabbing hold and having that tenacity like a bulldog to push your way through and to trust in God, he will see you through every time. Just the other day, I had a chance to visit a friend of mine, and his daughter has been here with the praise dance. Her name is Alexis. And her husband, I'm sorry, her, her dad, she called me, and this was two weeks ago, this was a Tuesday, that said that my dad is going into surgery at 9 o'clock. And I said, surgery at 9 o'clock? What, what's going on? And she said, well, they're going to have to remove his toe. And I said, well, okay, we will be praying for your dad. Well, the next morning, when I went ahead and I called her, I wanted to know what, you know, how, how uh, her dad was doing, she said that they had to go a little higher and they had to amputate below the knee. Well, this was startling. It, it really was. I mean, because, you know, he's been here in health, and I'm like, well, just so sudden like that. But I said, well, how is he doing? She said, well, um, Ms. Doris, he is in good spirits. And I said, well, bless God. We thank God for that. So I had a chance to go see him on yesterday. And I'm telling you, he is in good spirits. Thank God he is in good spirits. Yes, there's going to be a lot of adjusting. But when I think about that cripple, and even though his leg had to be amputated, his faith in God, his spirit is still trusting God even in the midst. And he said, I still have my life. And I said, you most certainly do. And I said, and that's an encouragement. It is indeed. So perseverance. I saw that there, it, not just in the spiritual, but also in the natural. And then when I read this, and it talked about how Paul looked intently at him, at this man to see that I can see that you, you're wanting that healing. I, I, I'm seeing that I'm looking at you and you're believing that you can be healed. And he said that I want you to stand up on your feet. But I see here, he, he jumped. He jumped. He leaped up and began to walk. That's perseverance. I'm reminded in 2 Corinthians Chapter 2, verse 14. But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us spreads and makes evident everywhere the sweet fragrance of the knowledge of him. So I go back to the brother because as I was walking into the room the nurse, she was coming down the hall, and she said, I just want to warn you that I'm, that I'm dressing his wound. And I said, well, 
I can just go ahead and wait. She said, no, you can just go in. I just didn't want you to be alarmed as you walked in. So as I walked in, but it was just being able to see him sitting up in his chair, number one. And it's just the smile. It's just the, the, the radiance of God. Even though I've lost my leg, but I still have God. God is there with me. I have my life. And then reading this, again, it talks about, but thanks be to God who always leads us to triumph in Christ. And through us, through, I thank God just to be able to be there, just to give encouraging words, rather than focusing on it, there's no leg there. But just looking at his face and his spirit, it encouraged me even more. It encouraged me. So yes, it was just like that sweet fragrance, just setting that atmosphere, even though, you know, we could be sad, and I'm quite sure, like I said, there are things he's going to have to get adjusted to. But bless God, just to listen to what he was saying about, okay, what I plan to do. I plan, he had just purchased uh, a nice SUV, and he said, well, what I'm going to have to do is just go ahead and have them uh, take care of it so that there will, with a remote, that he'll be able to use it since he can't use his leg. We'll get all that taken care of. Could be making excuses, but no, God will make a way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Perseverance. Through it all, perseverance. But through perseverance, having tenacity, having the persistence, and that determination, and the staying power of the greater one who lives in us. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, and I'll read it. It says, fight the good fight of faith. In the conflict with evil, take hold of eternal life to which you were called and for which you were made the good confession of faith in the presence of many witnesses. Fighting the good fight of faith. Take hold of that eternal life to which you were called and for which you made that good confession. And that was good to see that even in the midst of everything that was going on, he still had a good confession. And when I think about things that were just kind of disappointing and like a struggle with me, but nonetheless, God is God, and I still, yes, have a yes, Lord, a hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Psalm 16 and 8, I just want to share some of these scriptures. You might want to write them down. My brother doesn't have to put them up on the board. But Psalm 16 and 8, it says, I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. That perseverance, that determination to know that if I'm set the Lord before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Amen. Amen. Philippians 3.14 says, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 6 and 12, even though we just read it, I want to read it again. It says, fight the good fight of faith and take hold of eternal life to which you were called and you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. What a great cloud of witnesses that we know that have gone on before us. And those witnesses are up there just encouraging us to, yes, even though things are going to, to happen and you might be carried, but nonetheless, trust God. 
Just keep going and keeping God in the midst, and he will see you through. Fight the good fight of faith. Yeah. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every incumbent and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with the endurance, the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. What perseverance, what great example that Jesus Christ set for us, even in the midst of everything that he was going through, he just, not my will, but let thy will be done. <laughs> Romans 12 and 12, rejoicing in hope, pers persevering in tribulation, and devoted to prayer. Persevering and overcoming. Perseverance means sticking it out until the end. In the Christian context, it means to hold on to your faith through thick and thin, and every trial to the end of this earthly life. And then I thought about that. What we may encounter here on this earth is temporal. But when we think about when we see Jesus, when we think about when we get to heaven, it is eternity. Eternity. So regardless of what happens here on this earth, when we know that we're in Christ, it's just temporal. This too shall pass. But my God, just holding out until the very end, enduring knowing that this race wasn't given to the swift nor to the strong, but for those who will endure to the end, eternity, eternity with the Lord. Amen. It also says it is true that perseverance is not an easy assignment. Throughout the Bible, we see believers subjected to tests of their faith, and some of them which seem extraordinarily difficult. Abraham was told to sacrifice his son. Daniel in the lion's den. Joseph in prison. Jeremiah in the miry pit are all examples of extreme situations that call for no little faith in God on part of these believers. The Christian must rely completely upon God's justice and his fairness for the strength necessary to endure. Just as these great believers of the past did, whether we are called upon to suffer through an exceptionally long or miraculous process of deliverance, like the children of Israel when God led them out of Egypt, or whether the testing of our faith are destined to be less obvious to the human eye, we can rest assured of two things. As long as we are on this earth and in this life, our faith will be tested. But God has provided for us the means of coping with whatever we shall face. If you can, if you can please put 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And I will get that. Oh, thank you. It says, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand when you are tempted he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Perseverance, that tenacity, that termination, God will always make a way, always make a way. 
Jesus, the great example. And this is taken from Hebrews chapter 12. And I want to go ahead and I want to read that again. That's 1 through 3. Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, scripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and clearly entangles us, let us run with the endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us, looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of faith. The first incident for our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, and the completion of his work. Just consider and meditate on him who endured from sinners such bitter hostility against himself, Consider it all in comparison with your trials so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So just thinking on what Jesus Christ went through and how much he loved us to suffer through that persecution, that fruit of perseverance that he gives to us, that fruit that we have, that we just continue being determined and trusting God, even in the midst of what's going on. He is there for us. He's there. He set that example. Amen? Amen. 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 Bless God. So I just thank God again for this opportunity. Pastor Bob, I know it was short, sweet, but to the point. <laughs> Amen? Amen. But it's just that, as I said, just that, that personal testimony and just thanking God. But that was the word that was just resting just for that encouragement. But persevere. Regardless, just persevere. And as we, five days, and then we'll be entering into 2018. 2018 but even more. Eyes are focused, determined, the dedication just to trust God even the more because he never changes. He never changes. So I pray for, I pray that it's been an encouragement because again, it's, it's just encouraged me, but I wanted to go ahead and just share that personal testimony and also to be obedient. Amen? Amen. Thank you.